And either Young or Dave can give us a countdown. I think, uh, and... Test, test. Oh, there you go. That's perfect. And you can turn the music down a little bit for us. <laughs> um, if you can also just turn off your cell phone or just mute it, silence it for a portion of this time. the actual music that's going out right now? Huh? Oh, it's being played into the live right now. Hey, if you're listening to my voice right now, <laughs> we're family, I think it's fine. But I'll be quiet.
Well, hello, San Jose and New Vine families. Well, hello. Thank you, my hope. We are coming to you live from our sanctuary here in San Jose. We are so glad that you are joining us from your homes. All of our church staff is here in the sanctuary, socially distanced. And we are so excited to be back at our church campus. Not only is it a momentous day, but today we will also be celebrating the Lord's Supper together. So please, if you have not already, please prepare the elements for later use. Now what we'll do today is going to be different, but we're going to start with a time of worship, a different kind of worship, and Pastor John will be leading us now. Hello, church. It's good to be with you. Uh, it finally took me six months, but I'm in a service in the building, and so I'm super excited about that this morning. You know, we, we won't be singing today um, because we want to follow the county guidelines. But instead, we're going to participate in worship together uh, in a way that the church has done for many generations. And so we're going to begin by uh, reading a scripture together. We'll read Psalm 118 and it will be on the screen. And I'm going to ask the English to follow me and the Cantonese to follow Pastor Allen. The English will read the odd number verses and the Cantonese will read the even number. So let's read this together. Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. Glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. 
，奉耶和华的名来的是应当称颂的。我们从耶和华的殿中给你们祝福。The Lord is God, and He has made His light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. 你是我的神，我要称谢你。你是我的神，我要尊崇你。O、oh, give thanks to the Lord for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. 你们要称谢耶和华，因他本是良善的，他的慈爱永远长存。We're going to continue in our time of worship by declaring together、um, just the truth about who God is. This is a creed that has been shared by the church for many, many generations. 而我哋嚟到宣告神係邊一位，我哋要讀一個嘅使徒信經，係好多年、千千年年嘅人咧都係讀呢篇嘅使徒信經。And so all together as God's people, let's read this together, and we'll say we believe rather than I, because we're doing it as a community. 啊，我哋讀嘅時候咧，唔係話我係我們嚇，係一個嘅羣體咁去讀。We believe in God the Father Almighty. Creator of heaven and earth. We believe in God, the Almighty Creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. We believe in God, the Creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. 在本调比拉多手下受难，被钉在十字架上，受死，埋葬，降在阴间。The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. 第三天从死里复活，升天，坐在全能父神的右边，将来必从那里降临，审判活人、死人。We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 我信圣灵，我信圣义，公之教会。我信圣徒相通，我们信罪得赦免，我们信身体复活，我们信永生。阿门。Pray with me。我哋一齐嚟到祈祷。God in heaven, we worship you。天上嘅阿爸父，我哋敬拜你。And though we cannot worship the way that we're used to， 可能我哋今日嘅敬拜有啲嘅唔同。But we still give you praise for who you are and what you've done。我哋赞美你，你所做嘅一切。We praise you because you are with us here in this sanctuary and also in our homes. 多谢你今日同我哋同在，无论我哋喺呢个礼堂里面或者喺家中。And we praise you because you have made us a community together because of Jesus. 因为耶稣基督嘅缘故，我哋能够互为肢体。We love you and we pray all this in Jesus' name. 我哋爱你，奉耶稣基督嘅名字祈祷。阿门。Amen. We want to once again welcome you to our live stream service. This is a very exciting day for us. 今日咧系一个好兴奋嘅日子。All of our church staff is sitting here. 啊，我哋所有嘅同工咧，而家都坐喺下面。They RSVP'd last night or this earlier this week. 啊，佢哋要预留座位先有得坐噶。Everyone's wearing masks. 每个人都戴口罩。The MERV 13 air filters are now in place. 哇！而家啲空氣好乾淨啊 ！The purifiers are installed。啊，我哋有清新嘅空氣。So we are doing everything that we can to make regathering as safe as possible。啊，我哋咧啊，做盡一切嘅防禦措施，令到呢個地方咧係好清潔嘅地方。So over the next few weeks, for the next four weeks, all of our staff will be live in person。嚟緊呢三四個禮拜，我哋所有嘅同工都會喺度聚集。And then at the end of November。
We are planning to gather together as a church community. We're planning to invite some of you to come back as well. And because of the different language groups, we will be doing a rotational schedule. So the end of November, the tentative plan is for our Cantonese brothers and sisters to regather first. And then in early December, it'll be English. Uh, followed by our Mandarin brothers and sisters. This is all tentative. So we will let you know if anything changes. This month of November is a very special month. It's our missions month. And over the next three weeks, you will be hearing and seeing and uh, reflecting on God's word about missions. The theme this year is unfinished. The unfinished work of taking the Lord's gospel to all places of the earth. Next week, we're honored to have Chuck Davis come and speak with us. He and his wife were former Alliance missionaries in West Africa, in the country of Mali. So we're excited to see what he has to share with us. But before we do that, we have one video clip to share with you. This is a very moving story about what God did in the 1950s to an unreached people group, the Dani. From Papua in Indonesia, they were tribal. They were um, cannibals. And this is what God did back then. So let's take a look at this video. About 80 years ago, there was a place so isolated from the outside world, the people who lived there had never seen a wheel, looked in a mirror, or held a metal object. Then, explorers discovered this secluded location nestled in the remote central highlands of Papua, or Western New Guinea. It was home to a Stone Age tribe that practiced cannibalism and had worshipped spirits for centuries. After World War II ended, CNMA pioneers began plans to bring the gospel to these people whom time had forgotten. This is that story, and it's all been captured on never-before-seen 16mm film. In 1938, famed explorer Richard Archbold was the first Westerner to discover the Baleem Valley, what missionaries would one day call Shangri-La, home to 60,000 Dani people. Archbold published his report in a 1941 issue of National Geographic. The Dani had never had contact with the outside world. Yet with no exposure to 20th century implements, their ingenuity in crafting and wielding tools of stone, wood, and bone to create extensive gardens seen from the air was astonishing. When World War II ended, Alliance pioneers felt they could now begin writing an unfinished chapter in world missions by taking the good news to the remote Donnie, who had never had the opportunity to hear of Jesus' love for them. However, reaching the Donnie by land wasn't an option. Because their valley home was nearly impenetrable, surrounded by snow-capped mountain peaks and edged with thick jungles and swamps, Alliance missionaries determined the only way to reach them was by air. So began plans to buy a small amphibious plane that could land on the Baleem River that runs along the valley floor. A plane was purchased in 1950, but suffered damages the following year. Finally, in November 1953, a short Sealand amphibious aircraft was purchased in Belfast, Northern Ireland, where it was dedicated and named the Gospel Messenger. After years of planning and many steps of preparation, the historic day for entering the Baleem Valley arrived on April 20th, 1954. Al Lewis and Ed Ulrich piloted the plane, carrying five passengers, including missionaries Einar Michelson and Lloyd Van Stone. Also aboard was a newly converted May couple, Elisa, Ruth, and their baby, Dorcas, whose tribe lived west of the Baleem River. Their presence was hoped to communicate to the Dani that this wasn't a war party. 
Lloyd and his wife, Doris, along with their team members, had taken up the torch Joffrey laid down with his death during the war, a passion to reach the Donny with the gospel. Doris describes the anticipation of that first trip. Lowell Thomas said it was one of the most thrilling stories of modern missions in the 20th century. Not one single person had ever heard the name of Jesus. Before taking off, Einer said, I don't know how we'll be received, but there's no turning back now. Lloyd grinned and quoted an armed forces motto, we have to go in, we don't have to come back. The crew safely landed the plane on the river that day before setting up camp. They set up a little tiny green tent and there were two men against all of the valley out to tell men and women who Jesus was. On the second day, as the party was paddling their rubber boat across the river to higher ground, seven Donnie men approached them, led by the chief, shouting loudly. And they got over there and they grabbed a hold of their arms and went, mm, mm, like this and pushed them too. Einer recognized this as the ceremony of welcome among other New Guinean tribes. He approached the chief, along with several others in the party, repeating the greeting before extending his hand. At that point, the Dani leader threw his arms around the missionary and broke into tears. The rest of the men lowered their spears. Tribal leaders then invited the newcomers to attend a special welcome feast of roasted pig and sweet potatoes. After their first encounters with the Dani, one of the Alliance pioneers later wrote, So, realizing the slow, hard work ahead in months, and even years to come, these missionary heroes of the cross know that only the first chapter of their story has been written. missionaries back in the 1950s. So we invite you to join us next week for our annual missions conference. As part of our celebration on missions, we're also doing uh, our regular Christmas shoebox collection. If you haven't already picked up a shoebox, there are still some available here at the church. And on November 14th and 15th, there's going to be an Operation Shoebox Camp. Uh, Two different Zoom times. The first on Saturday to hear about how a shoebox transforms someone's life. And then on that Sunday, an opportunity to bless and pray for the shoeboxes that you have packed. Let's watch this short video clip from some of our kids in our church. My favorite part about Operation Christmas Child is how easy it is to do something that seems so small but actually has a huge opportunity to bring a lot of joy and hope to another child somewhere far away. My favorite part of the shoebox is because I like to put the thing that the child needs and some fun stuff. You know that all these good items that you're giving and putting in the shoebox, there's a kid out there that's receiving it and they are really happy and even though you can't see their face, you can just feel that they are joyful. One thing my family has done in the past is we will go out together as a family to buy stuff for our boxes, 
and then we will choose a kid who is close to our age and as we pack the box we will pray for the kid and pray for the box before sending it out. My family and I have participated in Operation Christmas Child by doing the packages, writing blessings to the children, and praying for the package to arrive safely to them. Paste, brush, razors, pencils, toys, books, that's all I want. I want my shoebox to go to Mexico, if possible, near the border, because orphanages over there are worn down and the kids that get it will be very happy since they got toys to play with. They pray and that they will know they will know Jesus, the one true God. Amen. Amen. My prayer for the kid who receives my shoebox is that he or she will know that God really exists. I want the child to put their lives in Jesus' hands. I pray This year, we are turning our Operation Christmas Child into a special all-church event called Operation Shoebox Camp. Join us on November 14th and 15th online. For more details, please see the family update. Good morning, San Jose and New Vine and New Spring family. Uh, it's so good to be with you. Uh, We're coming live for the first time since March from the home of San Jose Christian Alliance Church. I'm not sure if you can see the whole sanctuary on your screen, but there are more than five or six of us on stage here. Uh, to be exact, there are 24 of us worshiping together for the first time since March 18th. All those who are sitting in the chair, can you just shout out good morning to our church family so that they can hear us? And you can do the same for us. I know we cannot hear you, but just from wherever you are, just shout out good morning. The Lord has been good. I want to just take a, a moment just to appreciate our team, especially our administrative staff that have been just working so tirelessly to prepare our home. Uh, so that you can slowly come back. Uh, I know that we're probably not going to be able to meet together as a whole church family until well into next year. But we want to make sure that there's a space if you want to connect with people and worship with others in this season. So now even today, we did things very differently. We did not sing. Trust me, we had a long conversation about whether we can or should sing or not. We had long debates about whether to keep our mask on or not. We went through many different configurations of how to set up chairs so that we can have uh, this momentous experience uh, very meaningful to you. But as you know, many things that we have taken for granted has been taken away from us in this season. Yes, it would have been so much more meaningful if we were able to sing together. I miss hearing your voice. But we were intentional in keeping things very simple. The reason is this season really calls for a different mindset. Uh, just this weekend, I, I was thinking about this one pastor who was imprisoned in North Korea for three years. He was just released a few years ago. And I remember listening to his testimony. 
For three years, in isolation, all he had was the memory of God's word that he was ingrained in his uh, memory. And the songs that he could remember. Uh, no hymn books, no, no PowerPoint, no Bible in his hand. Uh, now that was an extreme case. But what if all those freedom, all those things that we take for granted is taken away from us? And I think we're getting a, a little bit of a taste of what that's going to be like. You know, as our staff have been praying together for this next season, the Lord has really put this passage on our heart. It's from Romans chapter 8. That how God has called us as more than just conqueror, more than conquerors. So I know it might take a little bit of time, but I want to read through uh, these uh, few verses from starting from verse 31. I'll go ahead and read it in English, and then Pastor Allen will lead us in Cantonese. Now, my version might be a little different, but just follow the screen. What then are we to say about all these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He did not even spare his own son, but offered him up for us all. How will he not also with him grant us everything? Who can bring accusation against God's elect? God is the one who justifies, who is the one who, who, is the one who condemns. Christ Jesus is the one who died, but even more has been raised. He also is at the right hand of God and intercedes for us. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or anguish or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, as it is written, because of we are being put to death all day long, we are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. Knowing all these things, we are more than victorious through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor any other created things will have the power to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Tallin 是患难吗？是困苦吗？是迫害吗？是饥饿吗？是赤身露体吗？是刀剑吗？正如经上所记，为你嘅缘故，我们终日面对死亡。人看我们像待宰的羊，但靠着爱我们的那一位，我们在这
所有嘢都開翻啦。We have to wait an hour and a half to just get a table at the restaurant. 我哋去餐館食飯要等成個半鐘頭。The shopping mall was p a c 所有商場都好多人。And yet you look at the church right now, we still cannot meet. 但係咧，教會仍然係空空嘅。Now I don't think we can blame politicians or government officials. 誒，我哋唔能夠咧責備呢啲嘅誒政治家。There's a reason why we still cannot meet like we used to, and it's because our time is not done. 啊，因為咧我哋仲未能夠聚集埋一齊。In fact, I believe that God is continuing to teach us and train us for what is actually coming in this next season. 神繼續嘅喺度鍛鍊教導我哋點樣預備將來。So this is really what I want to talk about today. 今日就係我哋要討論呢啲嘅問題。And I've asked our pastors and our staff to really think about what the season means for us. 啊，就諗下呢過去呢幾個月啊，有啲咩嘅意思呢 ？I want to start with Pastor Allen. Okay. <laughs> He just preached through the book of Revelation. Okay. <laughs> so he understands what this end time means. Okay. And uh, I want to hear from Pastor Alan on just your thoughts and your inklings, how God is preparing us uh, for this upcoming season as overcomers. Okay. The question is, how are we preparing for this upcoming season? Actually, I'm so uh, used to. Pre-record message. I have stage fright right now. But anyway, uh, I think as I, as Pastor Ted told us to reflect on the theme more than conqueror, the passage that we just read immediately come into my mind. Paul is saying all these things, the things about persecution, about hardship, about difficulties, all these things. We are more than conqueror. Why? Because we know we are deeply loved. The last few months, I think, um, after the morning TWA, I would uh, walk the trail, and I would meditate on God's word and pray out loud, and then commune with Him. I felt like the intimacy with Him. So one morning, when I was um, feeling very cold, all of a sudden the sun broke through and. Shine forth, and I felt the warm of the sunlight. I felt as if God is saying, "You are dearly loved, my son." I think knowing who we are in Him, and knowing that nothing can separate us from the love of God, can really help us to overcome our circumstances. Amen. Amen. Secondly, I think we can overcome because. We are in a loving community. Let's do a woohoo! Are you in a loving community? I think if we have to face this difficulty by ourselves, we are doomed to be defeated. But God put us in this loving community that we can overcome together. We love one another. We care for one another. And as a church, as a loving community, we can overcome whatever come our way. Uh, I felt like God is saying now, church is no longer confined by the four walls. We can truly not only love one another inside the church, but also the people outside. Uh, we can extend God's love to people we have never been able to reach before through the online platform, through practical means to really care for others. Uh, last Friday, uh, we our church delivered. Over 200 boxes of groceries to our family in need, to our ESL students, to our Cambodian church and Vietnamese church brother and sister, and even some people walking in from outside. I praise the Lord because this is a really a joyful day that we can really love our neighbors in practical deeds. Amen. And we see so many people come together, serve in unity, in joy, to help one another, to help those in need. I think this is truly God's heart.、Uh, I feel like if we focus on God's heart instead of our own needs, the church can be a beacon of light and hope in the end time, and we can conquer as a loving community. And ultimately, we will overcome because Jesus has overcome. Amen. Okay, I'm going to translate myself. 
啊，好耐咧冇上台講道，所以而家咧我好驚啊！啊，當我咧啊睇呢個信息就係呢個嘅德性有餘嘅時候，就係諗起羅馬書呢段嘅經文，講到咧我哋冇一樣嘢能夠叫我哋同神嘅愛嚟到隔絕，唔係患難，唔係刀劍，唔係困苦，唔係逼迫。所以咧，當我哋如果能夠深深嘅知道咧，我哋被愛，我哋嘅天父好愛我哋嘅時候，我哋知道我哋係邊個嘅時候，我哋就能夠勝過一切。過去嗰幾個月咧，我每一朝有機會啊，讀完經之後咧，同我太太一同咧行呢個嘅 Los Gatos Trail。我感受到咧，神咧真係好愛我哋。當我哋咧同佢傾偈、默想佢嘅話語嘅時候，神嗰個愛咧就充滿我哋嘅心，叫我哋咧能夠勝過一切嘅逆境。唔單止咁，我覺得咧，我哋係一個好被愛嘅一個羣體。當我哋能夠活出愛嘅時候，我哋能夠勝過一切。上星期五咧，我哋嘅教會咧派出咗二百幾個嘅愛心禮物盒，俾嗰啲有需要嘅人，俾嗰啲嘅長者，俾嗰啲越南教會、柬埔寨教會嘅弟兄姊妹，甚至咧有出邊嘅人咧入嚟咧攞呢啲嘅盒。我哋嘅心裏面咧好快樂啊！好弟兄姊妹咧。好團結，好合一，我為佢哋每一個咧嚟到感謝主。如果我哋每一個人要單獨去面對呢啲困難嘅時候，可能會好困難。但因為我哋喺一個愛嘅團體嘅裏面，我哋就能夠得勝。最終嘅得勝係因為耶穌基督得勝，所以我哋都會得勝。Amen。I don't fully understand Cantonese, but I think Pastor Alan said something that he didn't say in English, right? A story. <laughs> So he didn't quite translate, but it's so good. I think if we look at this passage, that's exactly what Paul is saying. You know, oftentimes we try to look for the proof of God's love and how well our lives go. And yet, what Paul is reminding is that don't look at your life. Look at what God has done. And he said, sorry, go ahead. 啊，所以咧呢段經文話咧，其實我哋唔係專注喺我哋嘅環境嘅裏面咧，咧我哋要專注喺神嘅身上。Here's the proof that you cannot be separated from the love of God. He did not even spare his own son. He offered him up for us all. How will he not also with him give us everything? Christ is the proof of His love for us. And I think that's why we can actually overcome and become conquerors. Douglas, I want to ask you. I know that this has been an unusual season for you as well. Having to raise young children. Your wife at the front line of the the fight against COVID-19. Just practically speaking, what are some things that you had to overcome in your life in this season? And also share with us how you believe God is shaping the church through some of our experiences. Yeah, thank you for that question, Pastor Ted. Um, you know, it it has been an interesting season, actually, to be quite honest, uh, a hard season. At times, with the three little monkeys. Ah, because I have three little monkeys, ah, so it's very difficult. Um, I think one thing that I have had to overcome is actually myself. Actually, I have to overcome myself. My own wants, my own desires, my own schedule. My own needs, my own priorities. Ah, my own priorities. Ah, my own priorities. Ah, my own priorities. Ah, my own priorities. Just um, serving the kids at home, helping them with their virtual school. Ah, 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 helping them with their virtual school. Um, just taking them on bike rides. Uh, um, so it, it has been a very self-reflective time for myself, even as a parent of young kids. And I really appreciate all of you that have young kids and really know the potential struggle or the hard times that you are also going through. But because of the love of Jesus, we can overcome. And even ask the Lord to be better parents and more patient. One of the other things that I've learned is just how to continue to care for our people. Picking up the phone. Making a personal visit socially distant. 
、um, ，just sending emails or texts。啊，或者咧，俾個電郵一個短信啦。And really relying on the body of Christ to continue to do that with each other。就係咧，我哋頂姊妹咧彼此嚟到關顧。It's really the love of God that compels us to care for one another。因為神嘅愛激勵我哋去彼此相愛。Finding out alternative ways, not just on Zoom, but other creative ways to love and care for one another。我哋咧用唔同嘅方法去彼此嘅關顧。It's a very interesting time for the church。呢個係一個好特別嘅時候。As we've had to Ask the Lord to show us how to do church in this season. 就係咧，我哋點樣能夠繼續教會嘅運作 ？But the Lord has opened up many opportunities for us. 但係神都俾我哋好多好多嘅機會。Whether it be through Zoom， 啊，可以喺 Zoom。Whether it be reaching across the boundary lines of、um, city limits。啊，甚至咧，我哋可以越跨越呢個城市嘅界限。That God is still building His church。神繼續建立佢嘅教會。And teaching us as a church to not take Things for granted. 就係咧，我哋唔好以為嗰啲係必然嘅事。And to prepare for the next season. 去預備我哋呢個未來係點樣 ？Whatever that might look like. 唔知將來會發生咩事。And really realizing that we had it really easy before. 原來我哋以前係咁容易嘅。But in the future, there may be more challenges. 但係將來可能會有更多嘅挑戰。But to not waste these last eight months. 但係我哋唔好浪費咗過去八個月。And to see what the Lord is teaching us, and how to be the hands and feet of Jesus. So, then, how can we become the hands and feet of Jesus? Thank you, Pastor Douglas. Thank you. I remember on March 18th when we had our first live stream service here on this stage. Ah, on March 18th, we had our first live stream service here on this stage. None of us thought that we would be here eight months after. 啊！冇人諗過咧，要隔成八個月先翻嚟。And we still have no idea how much longer we're gonna continue this。我哋唔知道仲有幾耐，我哋要咁樣樣。But this is probably very, very historic in our in our lifetime。啊！呢個咧係一個好歷史性嘅時候。I want to shift our focus to our younger people。啊！我哋咧問一啲年輕人。When this happened, our daughters actually talked about how they're gonna be COVID-19 generation. 啊！我哋嘅年輕人話佢哋自己係 COVID-19 嘅一代。There is a story that has been written about our young people。啊，一個故事咁樣講。啊 ，for some of us is like almost a tenth of their lifetime。有啲人甚至係好似佢咧啊啊一一成嘅生命啦。Staying at home。喺屋企。Now it's been a gift to me because I I really enjoy just being able to stay home and be with our family。啊，我雖然咧，我雖然好享受同屋企人嘅時間。But I have to be real, our, it just was driving our kids insane。啊，令到咧我哋嗰啲嘅細路仔掹頭髮啊。And when they go insane, they drive us insane。嗱，當佢掹頭髮，我又掹頭髮。And I'm sure many parents at home are feeling the same pressure。啊，好多人都好大壓力。啊 ，twenty four seven。廿四小時七日。School at home, work at home。啊，喺屋企做嘢，喺屋企读书。啊 ，Sam， you've been working with our young people。啊 ，Sam， 你同年轻人一同工作。And there are some amazing things that are happening amongst our college and youth. But I want to hear from you. What do you see God really producing in this COVID-19 generation? What will we remember？ 我想问你咧，喺神喺呢个 COVID-19 嘅 season， 点样去塑造我哋嘅年轻人呢？ Tell us what story will come out of this generation. Maybe if you can just prophetically speak into this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a very interesting season throughout all different ages. Ah, this one is a very special season. I've been honored to work with、uh, New Vine kids, with our youth, and with our college students. Ah, I have the opportunity to work with New Vine kids, with some college students, and with some students who are studying abroad. Every single one of them are looking for community and how they can continue that relationship aspect. 啊，每个人咧都希望咧有一个嘅团体。But because of COVID, the relationship has to do with the family. 啊，因为呢个 COVID 嘅疫情咧，好多人咧要逼留喺屋企。And then there's been many、uh, issues with some of the parents telling me and some of the college students telling me I can't stand the people in my house. 好多人同我讲，我真系忍无可忍啊！ So I won't say any names of who they are. Ah, I won't say you listen to who. But overall, one of the things that God has put on my heart was how much we need to discover ourselves. Ah, God told us that we need to discover ourselves. 
And what's amazing about this passage is because we need to learn how to see how God views us in love in order to discover who we truly are. Just last week, uh, we had one of the a kid share about his bullying experience before all of COVID happened. And all of them just surrounded him saying, that's terrible. And you know, we love you, we appreciate you. And this was all done over Zoom in small group. And for me as the only adult looking into that small group, it was very touching because I didn't have to tell him to open up, but he did it himself. And this is also the same with our youth and same with our college students. They are finding opportunities where they can lean into each other for help, but also be in that place to be vulnerable. So within this whole season of just going into isolation, there's also a time for them to reflect on how God sees who they are. And for those that I've seen who started to say, okay, God, I want to walk with you in this, you can start to see true transformation take place. There's been those that I've seen within the college that are taking initiative to even start leading their small group. And even within the youth, I see some of our students create care packages to give to other students. So within the heart of discovery, they also learn how to love each other well. And what's more amazing about it is now that Instead of doing it face to face, they're finding creative means of how to connect that way. So, as things get more and more difficult, it kind of puts us in a place to uh, lean in more to how God loves us and kind of remind ourselves over and over again that whatever I see myself as, it is not as, um, in comparison to how God truly sees me. So we're starting to see that this generation is being put through a trial, being refined uh, as gold, but at the end, with all of that refining and growing in faith, you're going to see a stronger generation emerge. It's so true. Purity comes in the fire, through the fire. When we really want to celebrate what God is doing. God is really producing a different kind of leadership, uh, even in times of difficulty and crisis like this. So thank you for doing that and leading that effort. Uh, Leonora, uh, last but not least, uh, uncertainty creates anxiety. That's really been the greatest challenge for all of us. We have no idea what's going to happen next, whether we're going to have a job, where we're going to get sick. But you share with me that you've also seen this level of anxiety rising even among the young people. We're not talking about youth, but we're talking about little children. Give us some insight in what you're experiencing, what you're seeing, and, and give us some practical uh, advice or encouragement as to how do we really shepherd our next generation in this next season. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I uh, set up a picnic, a physically distanced picnic with two families. Uh, and one of the families were not able to show up. Uh, what had happened was that one of the third graders uh, had a panic attack. Uh, 
she was afraid to come to the park because she had not left her house or been around anybody else except her family. She was crying and couldn't stop crying, so her mom called me and said they won't be able to make it. At that moment, I realized, okay, there may be something going on in our kids that we're not aware of until something is triggers it. The following week, um, I chose to go over to the family's house to meet with their daughter. She, she actually tried to cancel because she was afraid and had uh, social anxiety. Now, just to give you background, this girl is very outgoing. She is not someone who is normally uh, afraid to be around others. So I still came to the house and I met with her. Uh, and um, after our time together, we prayed. Uh, and um, in the prayer, she's actually a, a, a girl who likes to go fishing. Uh, so I gave her this picture of um, asking her where her anxiety, where she feels it in her body, and she said in her stomach. Uh, and I told her to take that anxiety out of her stomach and hold it in her hands. And as she held it in her hands, I told her how Jesus says for us to cast our cares to him. And to take our anxiety, our fear, whatever we have, and put it in our hands and cast it to him. So I told her, imagine that this anxiety you have is your bait that you're going to put on your fish hook. And I told her to take it and cast it to Jesus. And so she did that. And I told her now what's going to happen is Jesus is going to, in exchange, give you peace and joy. So we prayed, she finished, and uh, I got a text message later that day. That she planned a play date with a friend. And this was the first time she had seen anybody else uh, besides myself. And, and then uh, this week, I got another text message from the parent saying that she hasn't seen her so happy during this whole shelter in place. And she really truly believed that uh, Jesus healed her. And then I found out yesterday she had another play date. So this girl is uh, healed from her social anxiety. Uh, a social butterfly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I, I, what I feel and what I'm sensing in this season is that anxiety is going to come. Fear is going to come. We're going to have doubt. We're going to have these things. But we don't have to hold on to them. And just the picture of uh, casting these things to Jesus and him in exchange. You know, if you picture, you cast out your bait and you catch a fish, well, you're going to catch joy. You're going to catch peace. You're going to catch boldness and strength. Um, and it is just our time to walk in like the authority um, of Christ and of Jesus and just to really, truly submit those things to him. So I see that happening with our kids um, and in myself as well. All right, that's too long. Okay. <laughs> this is not just the story of one girl. I think many of us experienced in this season that anxiety, same anxiety. And I think what we're hearing from Leonora is that there has to be a process of daily exchange. There is really no magic pill or magic formula. It is really about us bringing our fears, our anxiety before the Lord and exchanging them with His peace, His presence. So I think it's so appropriate for us to end our time with communion. This is a part that I've been so looking forward to doing with you in person. And I know you're going to have to participate from home. But I think we can still do it as a community, as a family. 
And as I mentioned, just from the passage we read, we read in Romans chapter eight, what we're looking at is really the proof of God's love for us. You don't have to look for it elsewhere. He's already proven to us. That because of the sacrifice of Jesus, we can no longer be separated from the love of God. Even famine and persecution, sword and dangers. So it is reminder of his provision, his love. But even as I look at this table, I think it's also an invitation. Invitation to partake in his suffering. If we are co heirs with Christ, we must also share in his suffering. And I'm not sure how that's going to look like for each person. But it's coming together to say, Yes, Lord. We are partaking in this together. So as we uh, do this from home and even in this room, uh, first let the love of God just overflow your heart. This is the only way that we're going to be able to overcome and conquer this world. As you do that, make a fresh commitment. Your life here is not just for your own happiness. It is to reproduce that life in other people. And to be a blessing. So as we break this bread, I want to remind you, this is the body of Christ that was broken for you. And this cup is his covenant. Uh, a new covenant with us. Through the shedding of his blood. What I'm going to encourage you to do is that as you break bread and as you dip it in the cup, uh, you can take it from home uh, with your family, with your friends, or even by yourself. We're in this together. But as we conclude our time here, I also want to extend the invitation to our staff. Uh, Whenever you're ready, come to the table, take the prepackaged the uh, communion element, and you can go back and take your seat and take partake this together. So in a, it, just in a few minutes, we may not wait until everyone is done. Uh, but as we bring our time to a conclusion, I'm going to ask Pastor Allen to give us a pastoral blessing for all of us that are participating in this. Uh, we will pray at the end. Mm -hmm.
Let us pray. Jesus, thank you for your ultimate sacrifice on the cross. Thank you for shedding your blood and your body broken for us. Jesus, we cannot comprehend how much you love us. So we pray the Spirit of God to come into our hearts today so that we will be overwhelmed by your love today. We know that in all these things, we more than conqueror through Christ who loved us. Father, today we say that we can conquer, we can overcome because of you, because you have already overcome. We pray that the church today will stand firm in you, even in difficult times. We pray that we are a loving community, that we will love one another and also love our neighbor as ourselves. We thank you for this time we can remember you. Amen. So this concludes our service today. May the Lord be with you. We love you. Bye-bye.